All right, this video is going to cover using patterns with holes. We're going to be doing intro 27 and intro 28 in this video. Uh, very same concept using two different types of patterns. One will be a loop linear where I'm taking a group of holes and then patterning them linearly in one direction or a, a specific distance. The next one will be using pattern locations, very similar to multiple uh, work offsets, but all being done with a pattern. It'll give me a little bit of control independently between each location. So the first thing we need to do is we need to, to create our program, our stock geometry and so forth, but we're going to have to drill that bottom left hole. We're then going to pattern that into the grid pattern we see here, and then we're going to take that group of holes or that pattern and then pattern that where we need it to go. So let's go ahead and start our new program. So program manager, new conversational, uh, stock geometry. I'm going to set up for just one of these holes. It's going to be a box. I'm sorry, one of these parts. Yes, I want to manually size it. And they are three inches by three inches. 0.38 thick. And bottom left corner is zero. Next, we're going to set up some tools. I already have those in there. I've got my eighth inch drill, my quarter or my eighth inch center drill, my quarter inch drill. So we're ready to start programming. So I'm going to go input, part programming, holes, drilling, center drill, 0.1 minus 0.125. Using one. Next hole operation will be a drill using a drill. 0.1. Let's go down 0.4 to break through using tool four. And the next hole operation will be my locations. And again, I'm only going to drill that bottom left uh, cornered hole. So that's going to be 0.5 in X and 0.5 in Y. Now I'm going to take that one hole and I'm going to pattern it into a grid using a loop rectangular, which will allow me to give me a number of columns and a number of rows to do this. So I'm going to go to my pre uh, review screen. I'm going to highlight the first block in the series that I want to pattern. Insert block before, patterns, loop, rectangular. Now this gives me a number of, of instances in the, in the X and in the Y. So in this case, I'm going to have five in both the X and the Y. The positive direction, I went from the bottom left corner, so I'm going to step over positive in the X, positive in the Y. Uh, the distance between them is a typical distance of 0.5 in both directions. Now we're going to go to the last after the last block that we want to pattern, in this case it's going to be block two, we'll insert, pattern, end. So now if I hit draw, I have those 25 holes in this part where they're supposed to be. Now, I'm going to nest these patterns. I'm going to take this group of patterns and pattern them where I need them to go. But before I do that, I'm going to change my graphic settings by hitting the very bottom right settings button. Instead of just looking in solids, I'm going to look in show all. Show all will give me a solids view as well as a wireframe view. And I'll show you why that's important here in a second. So let's go back to our program. We're going to go to our program review screen. Now one, two, and three these blocks give me the one, the grid pattern of the 25 holes I need. So I need to pattern that group. I need to pattern all three of those blocks. So I'm going to go to the first block, the pattern rectangular. I'm going to insert a block before, and this will be a pattern loop linear. Now you can see here, I'm going to give it an equal distance in X or in Y and it's going to just put the number of repetitions that I tell it. In this case, we always include the original, so I want to just do it twice. 
I'm going to do the X and Y distance of 5 inches in the X. There is no movement in Y. It is literally a straight linear move. So I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to go all the way down to after the last block that I want to pattern. And in this case, it's a pattern end. For every pattern, you have to have a pattern end. So I will put another pattern end here. Insert, pattern, pattern end. So now we see blocks one and five. Everything in between those will be patterned in this uh, linear uh, method. And blocks one, or blocks two, three, and four will be the groups that gets patterned. So if I draw this now, you'll see that we have all of our holes and then a pattern showing the other holes where they need to be. Now the reason I had to, to show all here is because I have a couple of options. If I hit, or if I create stock geometry, there's only one piece of stock per program that I can create. So in this case, I made it a three inch by three inch square. And when I hit draw, it's gonna zoom in on that particular block. If there's anything outside of that and show all is not turned on or wireframe is not turned on, you wouldn't see anything out in space. There would be nothing there to show because there's no solid for me to display these features. So if you're going to do something outside of a part, if you're going to do multiple parts and you've done stock geometry, you're going to have to turn all of that on. The other option would be to not do stock geometry allow the control to create stock a little bit bigger than whatever it is you're going to do, and then there would be a very large piece of material that include all of these features and all the patterns. Okay, so now we're going to move on to intro 28. Intro 28 is identical in process. We would do the same things here that we did in the previous print. We would drill the bottom left most hole, we would pattern that in a grid pattern, and then we would take that grouping and blocks two, three, and four here and actually position them where we need to. Well, the last one we did, we just did two in a linear pattern. So I'm going to delete this block. I'm going to exit back out and I'm going to insert a block before because I want to replace that previous pattern loop linear with a pattern locations. Now pattern locations will give me the ability to move from the original, I'm always going from the original one or zero, zero, where to position these in the workplace, so or workspace. So the first one, we always can include our original, it's at zero, 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 so I'm gonna put zero, zero, zero in there, that gives me my first one. Now the first part to the right of that shows that it's five inches in X, so I just put the distances in there. It is negative 1.5, and it is negative one-eighth of an inch in Z, where it says Z reference minus uh, 0.125. So that'll take care of the first one. Now the next one, which is the over and down a little bit, says that it's six inches from the one we just did, but that's 11 inches from zero or the original. We always go from the original. So we're gonna go 11 inches we are going to go an additional inch and a quarter negative in Y. So we're gonna to have to go from the original, minus an inch and a half, minus an inch and a quarter. So it's actually gonna be two and three quarter. Oop. Minus two and three quarter. Try to do the math there. And the reference on this one is actually positive 0.3. So from the original, we go 0.3. And the last one is 11 and a half inches from zero. It is going to be from the negative two inches 750 up five inches. So we can do five plus inner. 
like we learned in one of the other uh, videos, that is a uh, polar programming. The distance, the direction, and enter. And our Z in this one is 0.25. Positive. So now if I am to draw this, we have all of our parts. You can see that they're all on different levels and they match exactly what the, uh, the print looks like. Now, in this case, we have a center drill and a drill. When we pattern something, like in this case, we center drilled and drilled that hole, it's going to pattern that grouping. So it would center drill and drill, center drill and drill, center drill and drill for 25 of them, and then it would do that um, th for three more parts. So if we want to prioritize these tool changes, we've already talked about in theory, how to do this by deleting some blocks, copying some blocks, and so forth. And we've been using tool change optimization. For those who don't have tool change optimization, I'm going to show you how to do it now by doing the cut and paste method. So I'm going to go to my view screen here. And I'm going to copy by clicking on the first block I want to copy, whoop, holding the shift key or the F on the control panel, and click the last one I want, and I want to copy all of these. So I'm going to go to multiple block functions, copy, highlight the end of the program, and paste. By the way, if you have a keyboard, control C, control X, control V, those all work as well. Now in this case, the pattern locations, the pattern rectangular, the ends, they're all going to be the same. The only thing I need to do here is in this first holes uh, block, I just want to delete the drill. I want the center drill only here. So I would go over and highlight drill and hit delete sub block. Then go to the second one and I want to delete the center drill, leaving only the drill. Now that way, when I slow this down, you'll see that it center drills all of the holes, then it'll come back in and drill them. So that is kind of the old school way to prioritize your tool changes. Um, we typically, a lot of us still do that today. I would try to program around my tool changes, even though we have the tool change optimization. Not everyone purchases that option. If you don't have that, then you would simply copy and paste your groups for the number of tools you had. If we had a tap, we'd have done it one more time, and then delete out the tools you don't need for each one of the operations, therefore prioritizing those tool changes to make it run a little faster.